Stellar black holes. Stellar black holes are the most common type of black hole in the universe. They are formed when a massive star reaches the end of its life cycle and undergoes a supernova explosion. During this explosion, the outer layers of the star are ejected into space, while the core collapses inward under the force of gravity. If the remaining mass of the core is between approximately 2.5 and 3 solar masses, it collapses into a black hole. The result is an extremely dense object with a gravitational pull so strong that not even light can escape. This boundary around the black hole is called the event horizon. Anything that crosses this invisible boundary is irretrievably pulled inward. Stellar black can be detected indirectly by their gravitational effects on nearby stars or by the X-rays emitted when matter falls into them and heats up. These black holes are often found in binary star systems where they siphon matter from a companion star, making them easier to identify. Supermassive black holes. Supermassive black holes are the largest known type of black hole with masses ranging from millions to billions of times that of the sun. They are found at the centers of most large galaxies, including our own Milky Way. Despite their enormous mass, they occupy a relatively small volume of space due to the extreme density of their matter. The origin of supermassive black holes is still an area of active research, but there are several leading theories. One possibility is that they formed from the direct collapse of massive clouds of gas in the early universe, bypassing the traditional stellar life cycle. Another hypothesis suggests that smaller black holes, such as stellar or intermediate types, merged repeatedly over time, eventually forming a supermassive core. Supermassive black holes exert an enormous gravitational influence on their surroundings, often affecting the orbits of stars and the structure of galaxies. The area around them may form an accretion disk, a swirling ring of infalling material that becomes superheated and emits powerful radiation. This process can power quasars, some of the brightest objects in the universe, which are thought to be supermassive black holes actively consuming matter at high rates. And although invisible themselves, supermassive black holes can be detected by observing their gravitational effects on nearby stars and gas or by the energetic emissions from their accretion disks. The Event Horizon Telescope famously imaged the shadow of a supermassive black hole in the galaxy M87 in 2019, marking a major breakthrough in astrophysics. Intermediate mass black holes. Intermediate mass black holes occupy the mass range between stellar and supermassive black holes, typically spanning from a few hundred to a few hundred thousand solar masses. For decades, these black holes were purely theoretical because no definitive observational evidence confirmed their existence. However, recent data, particularly from gravitational wave detections and observations of dense star clusters, suggest they do exist. The formation of intermediate mass black holes remains uncertain. One proposed mechanism is the hierarchical merging of multiple stellar mass black holes within dense environments like globular clusters, where gravitational interactions are frequent. Another theory involves the direct collapse of very massive stars early in the universe's history, which could bypass the need for smaller mergers. Intermediate mass black holes may also serve as a missing link in the evolutionary chain between stellar black holes and supermassive ones. They could play a role in seeding the centers of galaxies, eventually growing into supermassive black holes through further mergers and accretion. Detecting intermediate mass black holes is challenging because they do not always produce the bright radiation signatures associated with active galactic nuclei or large accretion disks. However, scientists look for indirect signs such as unusual stellar motions in dense star clusters or gravitational waves produced by their mergers with other compact objects. Primordial black holes. Primordial black holes are hypothetical black holes that may have formed shortly after the Big Bang during the earliest moments of the universe. Unlike other types, these black holes were not created by collapsing stars. Instead, they could have formed from extreme density fluctuations in the rapidly expanding early universe. In regions where matter was highly concentrated, gravity may have overwhelmed pressure forces, collapsing matter directly into black holes. The potential masses of primordial black holes span a vast range, from less than a gram to thousands of solar masses. This broad mass distribution arises from the variety of possible density conditions in the early universe. Some theories even suggest that extremely tiny primordial black holes, known as micro black holes, could have formed with masses smaller than Mount Everest, but with sizes much smaller than an atomic nucleus. Because they are not tied to stellar remnants, primordial black holes could exist in environments where no stars had yet formed. This makes them a candidate for explaining certain cosmological mysteries, including the composition of dark matter. Some models propose that a population of undetectable small primordial black holes 
could contribute significantly to the universe's total mass. Micro black holes. Micro black holes, also known as quantum black holes or mini black holes, are purely theoretical objects predicted by certain models of quantum gravity and high energy physics. These black holes would have extremely small masses, possibly as low as the Planck mass. In classical general relativity, there is a minimum mass below which black holes cannot form because gravity would be too weak to overcome internal pressure. However, some extensions of Einstein's theory, particularly those that incorporate quantum mechanics or extra spatial dimensions such as string theory, allow for the possibility of creating micro black holes under extremely high energy conditions. One proposed method for creating micro black holes involves particle collisions at energy levels close to the Planck scale. For instance, some speculative theories suggested that the Large Hadron Collider might produce them if extra dimensions exist. However, no such events have been detected, and current data place strict limits on their likelihood. Micro black holes, if they exist, would evaporate rapidly via Hawking radiation, a theoretical process proposed by physicist Stephen Hawking in which black holes lose mass and energy by emitting radiation. Due to their tiny size and brief lifespan, detecting such black holes would be extraordinarily difficult, yet if observed, they could offer powerful insights into quantum gravity and the unification of physics at extreme scales. Kerr black holes. Kerr black holes are a specific class of black holes that rotate. They are described by the Kerr solution to Einstein's equations of general relativity, which accounts for angular momentum in addition to mass. Unlike static black holes, rotating black holes drag spacetime around with them, a phenomenon known as frame dragging or the lens thuring effect. The structure of a Kerr black hole is more complex than that of a non-rotating Schwarzschild black hole. It has two key surfaces, the event horizon, beyond which nothing can escape, and the ergosphere, a region outside the event horizon where space-time is dragged faster than the speed of light relative to distant observers. Within the ergosphere, objects cannot remain stationary. They are forced to move in the direction of the black hole's spin. Kerr black holes are important because most real black holes in the universe are believed to rotate. Stellar black holes often inherit angular momentum from their progenitor stars, while supermassive black holes spin up through accretion of matter and mergers with other black holes. Rotation significantly affects how matter behaves around the black hole. For example, the inner edge of an accretion disk can move closer to a rapidly spinning Kerr black hole than to a non-rotating one. This allows more gravitational energy to be converted into radiation, making accretion disks around Kerr black holes some of the most efficient energy sources in the universe. Kerr black holes also allow for the theoretical possibility of exotic phenomena such as energy extraction via the Penrose process or hypothetical stable wormholes under specific configurations though these remain speculative and unsupported by direct evidence. Schwarzschild black holes. Schwarzschild black holes are the simplest theoretical type of black hole. They are non-rotating and uncharged, meaning they have only one defining characteristic, mass. This solution was the first exact answer to Einstein's field equations of general relativity and was formulated by Carl Schwarzschild in 1916. A Schwarzschild black hole is spherically symmetric, it has no spin and no electric charge, making its geometry relatively straightforward. The only surface it features is the event horizon, a spherical boundary where the escape velocity equals the speed of light. There is no ergosphere or additional outer structure as is seen in rotating or charged black holes. The defining radius of a Schwarzschild black hole is known as the Schwarzschild radius. It depends only on the black hole's mass and represents the distance from the center to the event horizon. Any object compressed within this radius becomes a black hole, Although Schwarzschild black holes are useful for theoretical modeling, real black holes in nature almost always rotate and often carry some charge, however small. Still, the Schwarzschild solution remains foundational in astrophysics because it sets the baseline for understanding more complex black hole models. Reissner-Nordstrom black holes. These black holes are theoretical solutions to Einstein's field equations that describe non-rotating black holes possessing electric charge. Unlike Schwarzschild black holes, which are defined solely by mass, Reissner-Nordstrom black holes are characterized by two properties, mass and electric charge. The addition of electric charge alters the black hole's structure. Instead of having just one event horizon, a Reissner-Nordstrom black hole features two, an outer event horizon and an inner Cauchy horizon. The outer horizon functions like the event horizon of any black hole. Crossing it means no return. The inner Cauchy horizon, located deeper inside, marks a boundary where predictability breaks down due to the nature of the space-time geometry. These black holes are still spherically symmetric, but are affected by the repulsive electromagnetic force, which counteracts gravity to some extent. This leads to notable differences in how matter behaves near the black hole. For instance, charged particles can be accelerated or decelerated depending on their own charge.
These black holes are not expected to occur naturally, most astronomical bodies are electrically neutral or nearly so, because they attract opposite charges from surrounding plasma. Nonetheless, this solution is important for exploring how black holes might behave under exotic conditions and for testing extensions to general relativity and quantum field theory. Kerr-Newman black holes. Kerr-Newman black holes are the most complex type of black hole allowed by general relativity. They possess all three possible physical properties, mass, angular momentum, spin, and electric charge. These black holes combine the rotational characteristics of Kerr black holes with the electromagnetic properties of Reissner-Nordstrom black holes. The geometry of a Kerr-Newman black hole is highly intricate. Like Reissner-Nordstrom black holes, they have two horizons, an outer event horizon and an inner Cauchy horizon. However, because they also rotate, they also feature an ergosphere, a region outside the event horizon where space-time is dragged in the direction of the black hole's spin. This ergosphere, combined with the black hole's charge, creates a uniquely distorted and dynamic region of space-time. Charged and rotating black holes produce powerful electromagnetic fields, which influence the motion of charged particles in their vicinity. They may also be capable of generating jets of high-energy particles and intense radiation, particularly when surrounded by magnetized accretion disks. These characteristics make Kerr-Newman black holes useful in modeling astrophysical processes involving high-energy emissions, like their charged or rotating counterparts. Kerr-Newman black holes are largely theoretical. In nature, it's expected that any net electric charge would be neutralized quickly by surrounding plasma. However, the Kerr-Newman solution remains a critical model in theoretical physics, especially in exploring how gravity, electromagnetism, and quantum effects intersect under extreme conditions.